Hi guys, we're back. Uh, but we've run into a bit of awkwardness. This may have taken too long for Classic. We're gonna try and get a hold of him. We're not gonna start without him if we can avoid it. I don't wanna do like a walkover, but that may be a potential scenario, so just be aware. Yeah. That's uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, at the same time though, for Impact, they just let me get a free ride to the finals, which won't be too bad. There, there he is. is. Nice. He may have just actually been watching the stream, like waiting how long that was going to take. But, okay, let me update the title of the stream too, because it's classic versus impact. And the winner of this goes on to fight against innovation in the grand finals. I got to say, our, our stream viewership goal for this was 2000 We're sitting around 3K right now. Our prize pool goal was $300. We're up to 423 And this is the first tournament of four. So I'm hoping uh, it goes up from here on out. I don't know if any of the codes are left. I hope they are. I want you guys to check the uh, code, though, exclamation mark, match Reno in chat. And if you haven't already tried, try using on the website. If they are all used up, the mission freaking accomplished. Okay. There we go. Overgrowth going to be the first map in this brand new best of three. It is, once again, a semifinals match. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. This tournament is uh, the first of what we're hoping to be many. This is, again, really good turnout. Really good sign up from players. And the fact that this didn't end up being a TBT fest blows me away. Like, we are <laughs> PVZ here for the semifinals. But okay. Kicking things off in the top right. He's the Zerg with the most. It's the blue impact. In the bottom left... As the red Protoss, he is classic. Alright, so generally speaking, through all the PVCs we've been watching, like we roll our eyes and we say Zerg should win with Hydralisks or Protoss should win with Carriers. And those are kind of the extremes of the matchup. But as we saw just earlier, it's not always going to be the case. And in fact, some instances we're going to have a bit more scrappy fights, which I think are so much better for the game, just as an FYI. But, uh,. It's really going to be an impact to make make any magic happen. An impact. Yeah, I mean, for classic's sake, I feel like he's, again, like he's the guy that comes in with a bit of a better name. I think he's maybe not objectively a better player, but like does impact go hydras or does he go to weird lurkers mm. or does he do ling and bane laying too much? You know, like I don't feel the game, the matchup, the flow of it's not really on the Protoss anymore where it used to be with the Adepts and it's a lot more on the Zerg with the current patch. Mm. Do you not agree? I would say that, well, it's just like, like the Protoss are the ones that have to figure something out against what is like these really good Hydras. So sometimes it is just like doing what they usually do, but just being aware that there's these units that can come out as opposed to just dealing with Ling Baneling or dealing with Ravagers, it's now Hydras. And for other people, it's like literally directing their build to those Hydras. But it is usually Hydras. So for Impact's sake, I guess I'm going to say he's going to go Ling Baneling Hydra. We saw Snoot not go Hydra, so it's not a guarantee. Uh, or he well, waited a long time to go Hydra. I mean, I'm thinking back to like even earlier today with Billowy versus Chan Kim, right? Like, I think if Billowy, or sorry, excuse me, Chan Kim, it stuck like a little bit more to Hydras and Lings and less to trying to move on to Lurkers. Like, that may have been better for him, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of has a limited decision making. I don't know. At the same time, Billowy did cool <laughs> things with DTs, and maybe Classic will too. We'll find out. I think DTs. What's interesting to me about DTs that I really loved is. These units have probably been the most, like, hated units for Protoss, but not in the way everyone kept expecting them to be. Like, when they made the Dark Shrine cheaper, everyone expected DT rushes. That wasn't the case. Nowadays, with Blink, everyone was expecting craziness out of there. No, they're still just used for Archons and drops, right? Like, <laughs> I, I feel so bad mm. for the Dark Templar. When the Dark Shriners were first reduced, there was tons of DT cheeses. Actually, you know, I'm going to take this one step further. I'm going to go lore with this, because the DTs were like super ostracized from the Protoss anyways. <laughs> like, this poor guy's just been under the worst treatment. Yeah, I mean, I hate DTs, so I'm totally not willing to like, forgive them. Even if they aren't used that, that much, or as they were afraid to be used. The Classic actually opens up with a Stargate on the front of his wall? Who does that? What the if this is part of the wall, then that's one thing. But this is like a double-layered wall. This is like, don't bailing bust me, bro. Like, I don't know what this wall is. I okay. look at this, and the first thing <laughs> to me is like, a lot of surface here for links to surround it. 
Yeah, I was like, I won't but okay, I won't bailing bust your big buildings, but also bailing bust that's out in that pile. <laughs> yeah, I won't bailing bust your big stupid stuff. I'll just go for the easy things. Like I bait. mean, it's worth noting Impact is pretty good with Ling's, and we saw some nice macro games out of him already. So, I think usually Ling Hydra not too bad. You go for bailings on top of that. It's a little more dedicated, sure, but he could get away with it if that was where this game was going. Uh, playing a little bit of chase the probe around the depth here in the third. Space. It gets both it's of them. Serious micro going down there. Yeah, what the hell? That was actually really cool, but ultimately, for impact, <laughs> it still wins out. Yeah, uh, Oracle gonna be coming out. Impact goes for not like a quick bailing nest, but one that can be used defensively if that's like your plan. If that's your defensive unit choice, then very good. I don't think they're a very solid defensive unit choice. We've seen too many games where they've even been prepared with bailings yet still died to the adepts just splitting. But in this case. Classic isn't looking to attack in with a lot of adepts, so Bailey Ness probably won't be used for a while longer. Impact sees third base, and you know, he could have chosen to go for like 30 lings right now and, and try to deny the third, but it still wouldn't have included Bailings, I think. Nice build cancel out of that drone. Very, very quickly done. You really have like a. how much, What's the attack speed on this? You've got 0.4 seconds to do it before the Oracle reloads. Feels good, man. Void Ray's coming out, gonna clean up some of these overlords. And Voidrays have had this weird resurgence. I really don't know, as, as much as I like to joke about it, if the speed upgrade has anything to do with it or not, but the fact that it does kill units so easily is certainly a nice, I think, uh, comfort. So my question, it was it was speed, right? It wasn't acceleration. Whoa, 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 whoa. He actually is going to get one of these overlords that just transformed into drops. Now realizing that Impact wanted to go for drops, he's going to be on the lookout for this. Impact may have given away too much on the front lines over there. Is actually oh, Queen's he is coming go with? Oh, he's going Whoa! I'm he's kind of queens. surprised he goes for so many banelings, but yeah, I guess if he's really going to be dedicating with queens as well, then make a couple of banelings, bust through these limited number of adepts and uh, that one zealot. The, the anti-air not ready with protection yet. Yeah, the anti-air should be good actually. The three queens can easily take on the oracle, not to mention they'll have transfuses to keep things from dying to that void ray. I'm not sure if he Ooh. focuses on the third or the natural though, but it looks like the third is going to be the choice. Well, the worst thing he could do is just be indecisive in between the two. <laughs> Right, that's uh, actually a big concern. Uh, he does pick up some of these band links. He's going to drop those, I suppose, go around the long way and hit the main base while this goes on. Pretty big all in. I mean, obviously you bring the queens, but just the fact that he stopped at 46 drones. It won't quite have the plus one, but this is not an attack that's going to be just stop, I guess, right here, right now. He will have the reinforcements, and those he, will probably have the plus one. He does lose a fair amount of band links to that overcharge and the force fields. Nice response out of Classic, but Impact is wrapping around. And if Classic isn't paying attention, he's going to lose a lot of probes in the main. The indecisiveness between the third, though, is a bit awkward. It's really hurting his uh, momentum. Impact was hitting as Classic is building his production. Now his production is all done, so this first attack is really going to oh, do he... substantial amount of damage because the next one will I... be met with an equal number of adepts. I think he wasn't paying attention, by the way. He bust the wrong pylon. He bust the pylon that was firing before, not the one that was firing just then. So this pylon killed all... everything. How did... How did those Bailings only kill five probes? Because he dropped them one at a time and they weren't stacked. Like, yeah, Impact... That was just like... Impact's making a lot of really good nothing. moves, but the control's not there. Yeah, the last Bailing did nothing to so many of these low probes. The Queens are going to go down, by the way. He's really fumbling the front lines. They're going to transfuse and stay alive a little bit longer, but he's lost so much for this. And i got to be honest, even though he's taking the gold base and he's on four, he's probably lost too much. It's just it felt like such an experimental drop. Like, I've seen some people do this, so I guess I'll try it. But he I was... know Impact have done it. Like, this is not something he never does. He actually has a couple, like, weird builds. I'd be surprised if that was the case. Well, this is super awkward. Drones have to get pulled for the adept, so a lot more going to go down. Uh, catching the warp ins. The classic now being the one who's a bit awkward when it comes to his control. <laughs> not sure what's up with that. He's just focusing, I guess, on moving the big army here on the left side of the map. Uh, hacker's gonna go down, and it feels like Impact's gonna go down. This is one of those situations where, yeah, okay, technically Banelings good against Adepts, but Adepts can split pretty well. And these aren't these aren't Rolly Banelings with plus 10 health. No, they're just regular Banelings with how much? I don't even know how much a normal Banelings has. 30? 30. The Adept split is actually pretty good. It's gonna be almost impossible to get the Baneling connects that he needs to. Other side of the map, Impact was trying to do some Ling damage with his drop, so that got shut down pretty quickly. Drop of the main two, GG. GG. Classic. Takes the first game. What an odd showing from Impact there. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit just like 
shrugging that one off. Like I really, I, I really truly believe what he was doing were the right moves with the wrong execution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that sums it up. It just, uh, it was, it just, it's not, Impact does not just, like, do things, as far as I know. Like, he has practice builds and does on a ladder and doesn't, like, other tournaments, so for him to just, like, completely look lost, like, after his queen it's died, surprising. he's just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't, it was weird. Well, we're going to be getting into Whirlwind next. I'm going to join off of you here. We'll uh, hold on to the commercial break. We normally try and stick one in, but these guys have been waiting for a while, so we'll let them try and get this out of the way. But uh, do keep in mind, the Grand Finals with Innovation will be coming up. Our big super secret full reveal as well. So keep teasing this. It's like a bad reality show. <laughs> Next time. After this break. Etc. Alright, well, looks like they're ready to go. Let's hop into it. Whirlwind. The Legacy of the Void version. Game number two. I am curious though, so I want to see your guys' opinion in chat. Just write P or Z for this. Do you want to see the Protoss versus Innovation or the Zerg versus Innovation in the finals? Which one are you guys like a little bit more stoked and hyped for? I'm I'm truly curious. Also, I don't know who the Mystery Team Liquid editor is, but somebody's been updating the matches as we've been going, so thank you kindly for that. When I think sometimes of like what people do. I'm gonna say in esports, but just like in general for like their hobbies, I'm just like kind of blown away sometimes. Like there's just people doing things that no one's really ever gonna thank them for, and their mind is doing it. Well, that's why I try to always give thanks. But then, still at the end of the day, I'm killing esports in the bad guys. So whatever. Uh, top right side of the map, we've got the red Zerg player. He's down one game. It's Impact. On top left is the blue Protoss. He is classic. Alright, so I liked Classic that game, but I still don't understand that Stargate and the gateway in that front wall. Like, that, I feel it's going to be one of those mysteries in life. Like, you saw a ghost, but you'll never see it again, and no one will ever see a ghost. You'll be the only one in the universe who saw that ghost, so nobody will be able to explain it to you. It's a lonely existence. It's Pac-Man. Man, speaking of lonely, did you see that thing Red Eye tweeted yesterday? About, like, uh... ambition and stuff? No? Man, that thing hit me in the feels. I just sat there, I read that, and I just like welled up a little bit. Didn't quite cry, but you know, got that like teary eyed feel going on. I feel like I saw a lot of Red Eyes tweets yesterday, but I did have a like six hour period of time where I didn't have any Wi Fi. I don't get, so. I know you've talked about this. I don't really, I feel like I don't suffer from seasonal depression, but I do suffer from like not loneliness, but like a loneliness attacks from time to time and I think the uh the tweet just just picked me at the right moment um, yeah well oh. the base uh base is being taken regularly I suppose no one days builds here I do like that classic goes for the frontal wall off I mean this is like something you see with the forge fast expand but it can be dangerous if there was like that cheesy build from impact but of course impacts goes for three hatch Whirlwind well, is going to be the safest map for the macro game, and Impact maybe is going to just stay away from the all-ins well, for the rest of the series. I think, so, the spawn locations are going to make this not quite the dynamic of the ones we've seen on cross-spawn, but cross-spawn on Whirlwind has created some really interesting games with the way army pathing goes through the middle of the map. Unfortunately, when you get these spawn locations, I don't think they're going to be missing each other very often. Like, armies should not be walking side by side like we've seen in the last couple of times of Whirlwind. They won't miss each other at all. When they're gone. Yeah, there's no <laughs> potential like base trade. Yeah. There's no potential base trade problems here. Oh, well, there shouldn't be. There still might be. Uh, a couple of lings of the way, probably just to deal with the adepts. Uh, speed's like too far off to really be afraid of a bunch of lings flooding into classics natural. Although, again, this is like this looks like more like a forge fast expand wall, just because Roland has such a big wall that's natural, you need something to protect it, because you're not going to get the full wall off mm. for some time. But forge fast expand your thing in the past, man. I'm really astonished, by the way. It's almost, I, I just finished counting. It's almost a dead split between Zs and Ps, and people want to see Protoss or Zerg in that finals. Yes, I guess please. that is pretty much how every vote ever goes. You know, I always thought it was just us. I realized that talking to some other popular streamers, too, whenever they run with straw polls, they run into the same problem. Where it's like it's always just tied. Three way tie, <laughs> two way tie, doesn't matter. I just mean the options are both so tempting. Getting public opinion is so useless sometimes. 
I mean, look at the, oh, yeah. look at the most recent voting system in America. Right? How... <laughs> I wasn't going there, but it ended up there. Uh, he will finally almost get that adept. Unfortunately, will not quite get the kill. Overlord's gonna have some nice positioning on top of this, so there's nothing really to shoot it back. So it gets to chill for some time. Ooh, classic again, going for adepts. Much faster resident glades this game, though. Like his resident glades didn't finish until his third base was, I think, getting saturated or even like fully saturated, maybe. And that's because, of course, he went for the faster Stargate opener and the faster third base, which is going to be a lot more difficult to do on Whirlwind, I think. The Whirlwind third base is actually up in a very obnoxious location. It's not technically it that far away from your natural, but it does like have another ramp entirely. It doesn't, it's like dead it's space also open. between the main and the natural. Yeah, it's pretty open, like, so when you're up there, you got room to maneuver. Yeah, no matter which one you take, too. Thank you, Snipe Hunt, for the 32 months on that resub. Very much appreciated, man. Ooh, uh, this isn't like. You know, an extreme number of adepts or gateways following it up, and there's like no war prism, right? But impact, I don't know if he was quite prepared for this. Like, he's getting his return now, but he didn't have as many lings as he may have wanted. Now, 16 more lings are on the way, his lings at the front are being pulled back. If Classic had been more daring, maybe he would have been in the mineral line killing drones, but he kind of played the safe, like, hide against the wall first, and that gave impact time to respond. I love the idea that's like cunning and daring because of the attributes to this attack. Oh, yeah. Uh, he is going to finally clean this up. And, I mean, losing oh. the Ling sucks, but he does it without losing too many drones, which is what matters the most, I feel. Oh, yeah, not many drones at all. Again, because Classic just like shaded into a wall. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, Ling's aren't here. I guess we'll go attack. So the double Stargate follow up. Classic is playing, I guess, you can't call it a Classic style because Classic's got to be like more than a year right but he is playing very pre-patch classic please don't go void race please go oracles <laughs> i was expecting phoenix to be honest like if he's if he's really playing like the last patch builds or are, are, you know were played then i would expect the mass phoenixes Ooh, impact's also gonna drop over to the main two which could be kind of cool i think classic's gonna be well prepared for a fight at the front that's what you expect to have happen but maybe not in the main uh, i definitely doesn't have a vision on this just yet anyways uh not that many roaches not that many ravagers in fact not much of anything. It's not really any pressure here at all. It's just fall back. Yeah, it's, I mean, an attempt to take advantage of the adepts, you know, that just died. And it's not a bad thing to poke. As long as you don't die, and he didn't. The Phoenix, is unfortunately, will make sure this Overlord drop doesn't do anything. It does reveal the double Phoenix, though. Mm, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, had not seen the double Stargate, but seeing two come at a time like that, it's suspicious. Well, we have the layer. About almost halfway done, so we'll see him move on in a moment. Let's see what tech choice he decides to dedicate to. It is ranged weapon upgrades, but <coughs> excuse me, I don't imagine he's saying to roach links. He's making roaches now. It's gonna it's gonna be good to have some for the buffer, but this has to move on to hydras. Yeah, yeah. If, oh, opening with roaches is definitely the safest way to go. You can try and be tricky with mass ling upgrades, banelings, but. Ling Baneling, or Ling Roach is going to be your safest go to. And it's going to be what he uh, has to respond against this mass amount of adepts. And Classic, not exactly like, you know, eight gating it behind it, so he's not allowed to reinforce with, but he did manage to collect quite a few adepts, just the warpings he had. Oh, but he has a wall on his natural? Oh, kind of. Weird. They got, like, stuck attacking into adepts as opposed to running through, so, like, half of the Lings died. Due to classic Sim City. Well, with all weird. the roaches and the ravagers, he does manage to hold on once again without taking too much damage. The phoenixes are limited because of their energy, so these lings actually have more killing potential than Classic's whole oh, army wow. did. Yeah, not as many as we were supposed to go to the main base. They didn't think they were getting anything done. Seven probes and four drones. Oh, now, the phoenix is just starting oh. to go ham, though. There's no anti-air. He might kill fear. all the overlords. Yeah, this was the fear of the adept attack. I don't know. I didn't get to see if he was intentionally focused on the queens, but it wouldn't have surprised me. I mean, we've actually seen some players with Vikings do this in TVZ, but rarely do we see this happen in ZVP. This is bad for Impact. He's losing out not just a ton of money, but the Overlords themselves. He's going to get supply blocked because if it's all in your roaches, he won't be able to make that many hydras. Yeah, I I don't know if he oh, just thought like... that overwhelming amounts of roaches <laughs> would deal with the double Phoenix opener, or if he just didn't realize there would be so many phoenixes. I guess by killing the third base, it does kind of in a way deal with the rapture the eggs. There you go. But he also took a bit of damage. Classic should be able to replant that, and may even hold it like the second time. 
But that was a nice snipe of the roaches. Uh, this is going to eventually run out of energy, but they have actually held. Yes, they have. Uh, I mean, Classic definitely needs a third phase. So even though he can re like plant it back down, it might be okay. That time that it takes it to like, actually build an axis is pretty well, substantial. Impact I... is already up to his perfect drone count for three bases. And he's moving on to Hydras. And that's the point here, right? Like yeah. Normally, you know, those Phoenix are scooping up the Hydras one at a time as they get spawned from the third, moving to the natural and such. But they just use all their energy on the Roaches. They really don't actually have that much pickup potential. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very deadly uh, counterattack if they did have enough energy. Thank you, by the dips helping out. Yeah. Thank you, by the way, to Rasbrol for the 11 month resub. Says Rasp is here. Thank you. Uh, now, the Phoenix is going to lift up what they can. The Hydra count's not that great. He might have just hit that perfect uh, timing. I don't yeah. know. But there are all, a There's lot of them are out of Phoenix. juice. 12 Phoenix, what was probably 8 Hydras, I want to say. And Impact can't get enough Hydras bulked up. The Phoenix might have done it, but when they oh, run out of juice, Impact can try and recover. I actually like the choice to build roaches in this situation because he knows the phoenixes are limited on what they can do. They can't kill buildings and they're limited on energy. The roaches, however, would be able to break through adepts if there was a follow up, and I think he expected more adepts coming. I would have, after all, so this was a really great choice. That being said, he will at some point need to stop rallying these. Just bulk them up yeah. around the spore crawlers. Hide, hide, and hide. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff has been happening in this game, so can't necessarily blame Impact for having a couple overlords still. So going every which way, but he is supply block now. Ooh. He's managed to fit in enough Hydras before that, though, well, but I think he's okay, just because the Phoenixes are out of energy. Well, regardless of that, he almost has the power to kill down this Nexus. He, these Phoenix had to come back home if they wanted to save the base, and, I mean, look at that. Impact might still even get it? I don't know. It's close. Uh, no, he could pick he, them all up, I think. He should be able to CC them, enough of them, yeah. But this was still, like, look how close that Nexus was. This was Jesus. a base Impact needed. He's mined out of his main. He's mining out of his natural. Like, he needed a third base, and this base... Oh, it was so important that this finished, that this lived. Yeah, it is. It's still very low, though, and if Impact makes, like, 20 lings, he might be able to snipe it. Still pretty concerned about the Phoenixes, though, dominating the sky on his side of the map. He's trying to get as many Hydras as possible. A couple Roaches, too, to protect them against the Adepts. Fortunately, though, the Adepts and the Phoenix combined are so good against Hydras. That's why the Roaches are so important. That's why he <laughs> made them earlier. He'll have to make them again. Make Korea There's great two again. Crawlers there, and he didn't even care. He didn't even care. Phoenixes. <laughs> he got 19 Phoenixes, and only two have been lost this entire game. Yeah, they're what pretty. The they're pretty durable thanks to their speed. Like you get stuck in the sport call range, you just fly the hell out of it. But again, Phoenixes don't have infinite energy, and at some point, like they have to pick: do you kill yeah. the workers or do you kill the roaches? <laughs> Impact had gotten up to a decent Hydra count. I thought he was able to stabilize. If he's not able to stabilize that last army fight, the last <laughs> Hydra army, I don't think he can do it now. I actually, I really like Burrow. I love Burrow for this situation. Tunneling Claws is whatever, but like, no longer do you just have to take the fight with Hydra. You just Burrow them and chill out. Uh, now, there's a Fleet Beacon finishing up here, and I'm, I'm thinking and I'm smelling some carriers. It's like too good at this point to not go for them. <laughs> I'm actually kind of thinking like... He's gonna just abuse Phoenixes. Why would like, you, why would you need any impulse crystals? I mean, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. But oh, I that's, feel like we've, we've actually seen the game before where like someone did that. We were like, why? Like this. <laughs> it's like, dude, <laughs> you're, you're winning so hard already. Like, well, he's gonna lose some Phoenixes finally. The thing about them not dying earlier was they were Very taking good. a lot of damage. So six just cracked. Nice. But yeah, carriers. I want to point out, carriers can win against hydras when hydras are actually in control of the game. This is a game where impact is decisively behind with this hydra count and has been for some time, uh, mostly due to classics great policing with the phoenix. But I, I just fear that there's no way he's going to have the count to take on the carriers. Oh, barely enough to take on the phoenix. Oh, so nasty. You know, another part of this for impact Thanks. that can be argued is like there's there's no fungal growths coming out. Like an infester could have dealt with these. I feel so long yeah. ago. One good fungal yeah, growth. Yeah. Not even a good one. One fungal growth catches like even a quarter of the phoenix. But as the fungal roaches get in. Cool. Yeah, there's no detection. They'll be able to scout the carriers too. So even though it's still like, okay, can Impact even do anything about it? At least now he knows. By the way, three He's per base trying. is what you need to one shot the probes. That's why he splits them up in such a weird way. On Burrows over here, uh, the natural is going to be kind of whatever. Third base under attack and under assault. This adapts, this overcharges, so this shouldn't be too bad. I mean, you see Roaches on Burrow two bases, you know they're going to be at your third. Mm, yep. This is definitely an annoying 
amount of damage, but I still think that Classic is getting to that better army. Impact's going with numbers, but he doesn't really have an economy to win with numbers like Zerg usually would. Yeah, by the way, Carrier's Interceptors, one of the biggest changes that's making everyone so tilted is that they're almost free units. They're not quite free units, but they're almost free units at five minerals per Interceptor now. So you can, you can afford a lot of Interceptors. Oh, very interesting tactics. Burry away from the Phoenix again. Scouting information aplenty, and he's split across all of his uh, roaches now, so they're all over the place. Meanwhile, Impact has obtained quite the admirable army, but it's still, I feel, no match for these carriers. He's moving out now because he has to. His best bet is to take the carriers on when there's three to six of them, not when there's like nine or twelve. Yep, that is absolutely true. But this, I mean, this is getting close to both of their last armies. Like, they've been stuck on three bases for so long. Impact's mine out of his main base and his natural and just is not investing into a fourth. Somebody asking for Zombie Rub's PayPal, by the way. We have our own individual PayPal links set up in the info section down below. Just click on Zombie Rub's or mine if you want to find them. Uh, so this used to be a game of being able to kill the Interceptors and that was enough. That's not the case anymore. But uh, the Phoenixes swoop on in. We got Corrosive Biles looking to land atop of the Adepts. Phoenixes are just dealing with the Hydras so quickly, however, and the Carriers will remain well, mostly untouched. They lost a little bit of shields. One almost yep. goes down. Not even. He decides to focus his attention on the Nexus at the last second, but it's too late. Impact's lost, and unfortunately, it looks like Impact might just be dead. GG. So Classic's going to go to the finals, and I think, was it Snoot earlier who said in before TVP finals? Good call. Was that what he said? I think it was Snoot. Good call. Good call. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have Classic versus Innovation in a best of five to wrap up the event. Prize pool is still at 426, and when we get into that first game, we're not going to be talking about the game because we'll be telling you guys super dirty secrets. I'm not kidding. We'll be back in two minutes when we set up the finals. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.